everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, and today I am in a fabulous park slash botanic garden in Opatia, Croatia. And I wanted to start a video here because that's a giant Sequoia Sempervirens growing and I'm completely surrounded by camellias. They're the first camellias that I have seen since being in uh, Croatia. And I'm super excited. There's so many familiar plants. Next to me is Danae. Um, there's lots of Eliagnus, there's Chimenanthus praecox right here, uh, deciduous magnolias. The magnolia grandiflora is planted all over the place as street trees. Uh, Pittosporum, there's a lot of familiar plant material, which is really interesting. Um, I think the biggest difference is pretty humidity. Um, I think they're probably a little cooler and a little warmer in the winter, but otherwise we're pretty similar climate. They have a lot of Trachycarpus fortunii planted. Um, that's been the primary palm tree, but I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm with a bunch of plant nerds. So maybe you'll get some really awesome commentary. Hopefully you'll enjoy this video. And this is the start of their camellia garden. I really appreciate that they go through the history particularly of how it got here. Camellias have a really interesting uh, place in history with regard to being a part of the spice trade. Um, ornamental camellias and of course Camellia sinensis, the tea camellia. Now, it's the middle of summer, camellias are not in bloom, but these all look really happy and healthy. And well, I've got to say, if you have a bucket list to come to the Mediterranean, I would definitely recommend Croatia. It's very affordable and accessible and friendly, easy to navigate. So you'd see Formium are hardy here, doing everything that they're supposed to. Of course, for us, we grow these as like thrillers in containers for the summer. And you know, one of the big differences is I think that they aren't as hot as we are. So you've got fabulous things like Fagus that are growing really well. And I think that looks like all Gazania planted at the base. No, those are Zinnias. Zinnia and Gustafolia planted here. It's incredible that their parks are basically botanical gardens. And you can see back there in the background, that's Magnolia grandiflora and Liriodendron. And that looks like Cryptomeria, that conifer over there. And Camerops, that, that palm. Akubas planted in the shade and of course, crepe myrtles. I was actually irrationally excited yesterday when I found my first crepe myrtles on the trip. <laughs> Probably shouldn't get that excited, but it's just something about being in a place where the plant material is familiar. It makes you feel like you're at home. Oh, Hi, Here's my plant nerds. We've got a little collection from North Carolina. Wait, introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Carrie Hoffman. Of Hoffman Nursery. They all know your family. Yeah. Cool. I'm Dave, the husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Chris, plant collector. <laughs> I'm Keith. Uh, I am also a plant collector. And he's the manager of Durham Garden Center. He is, yes. So Come when visit. when in doubt, Come go visit. shop just with had a him. Facelift. Yeah. Come see. <laughs> and you're standing under a grove of Trachycarpus fortunii. You sure are. The most cold hardy palm. Uh, trunking. Trunking. Cold hardy palm. And is this camera ops? I think it might be. Sure. You know. Uh, no. This is spiky. Palmettos aren't spiky. <laughs> oh, look at those are ginkgos. They are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I was caught up in the moment. I wasn't planning on making a video, but now I am, so I'm going to backtrack a little. You can see these giant southern magnolias, Magnolia grandiflora with Pittosporum and Akuba underneath. So this is a very much a mix of Asian and North American plant material, very similar to what we use in North Carolina. And then here into the knot garden, which is of course Adriatic Sea adjacent, you've got Buxus, you've got adult form Hetera helix, and then, you know, begonias and 
uh, Dusty Miller, the Nagave in the middle. And this is of course meant to be viewed from that fabulous balcony up there. This trip has infinitely made me appreciate balconies because we had an awesome one at our Airbnb and got to enjoy it every single day. So bay trees are hardy and they actually do grow into trees. They have trunks. This is one that's being managed as a bush. And then Callistamon, fabulous, fabulous plant. Not quite hardy where we live, but my parents grow this. And look, mimosa tree. Oh my gosh, it's cinnamomum. Thank you. Which species? Does it have a name? Don't care. I grow I this. Sure I, was like, uh, like... I have this at my house. I think this might be Jensenianum. Uh, it looks very similar to the one that I have. So this is a relative of cinnamon, but it's cold hardy. Cold hardy broadleaf evergreen that's been reliable in Fuquay. You can see it gets really large. This one's got a big gnarly trunk underneath here. But Cinnamomum. Not sure of the species. It might not be Jensenianum, but still, I think it's a fun just to identify genus when, when you travel. <laughs> so I'm not a huge fan of Eliagnus, and for us in the States, it's kind of invasive, but it definitely serves its purpose here. It does well. That fabulous weeping cedrus here. And another plant I'm not a big fan of are, are um, Berberus. I'm like, I've blocked their name because I will not grow them. But you know, here they're doing, they're doing well enough. Uh, they're just not interesting and they're spiky, so I don't see a lot of reason. Oh, what are we looking at? The deciduous magnolia or the pokeweed? Phytolacca americana. Oh my god, I can't mm -hmm. believe. So there you go, there's poke growing in Croatia. Edible. Edible, but also weedy. Yes. Huge taproot. Huge taproot. Actually, we have a lot of the same weeds. Morning Glory. <laughs> There's a lot that's botanically familiar here. Like I mentioned, I just think there's like an incredible feeling of familiarity when you can recognize the plant material that you're surrounded by. <laughs> well, actually, these would be cold frames, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is, the this is, yeah, this is where the plant material gets produced and probably overwintered. That's very similar to what we had at Montrose and we would put plexiglass, Lexan, over it in the winter time. Oh, thin sheets of mica. To grow Armenian cucumbers for the Roman emperor who had like a condition and needed cucumbers and needed cucumbers that wouldn't ripen in time so the doctors created these cold frames and covered the, well dug a hole and covered them in mica brilliant well bryce lane taught us <sighs> shout out to bryce lane <laughs> wish you were here bryce we do wish you were here bryce so i have to show you that nandina are also <laughs> included <laughs> uh, you know it, they don't seem like they're invasive here or anything, whereas in North Carolina, they're a bit aggressive and seedy. But underneath it, that is planted underneath another Magnolia grandiflora. North Carolina plant material is well represented in Croatia. So we've just walked into a place that's like, t I don't know, 10 degrees cooler. And we're realizing it's a bay forest. So yeah, like the bay that you cook with, old bay seasoning, this is what it looks like here. Bay leaves. Bay leaves. Bay leaves. So you've got the lower growth, which are all suckers, and you have this large tree-like form formation. I've never seen it, anything like this before, so it's pretty exciting. You know, we grow bay as an annual in pots. And if you're lucky, you can keep it alive for a few years, but it's not ground hardy where we live. So this is pretty remarkable. That is, uh, it stinks so bad here. These are all ginkgo seedlings. A carpet. Literally, I've never seen so many ginkgo seedlings from this grand dame. Oh, Ooh, look at all the fruits. Oh my God. <laughs> 
So you can see these are obviously hardy bananas, fruiting, flowering, covered in bees for pollination. Really beautiful, huge stand. I don't know the species. It's not the species that I grow. <laughs> so not Bajou and not Volutna. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of labels here. So you just have to enjoy it for what it is. And I'm not savvy enough to be able to identify all of these plants, but it is pretty exciting to see. And you know, I'm not a fan of cannas because we have canna leaf rollers, which absolutely destroy them. But here they don't have leaf rollers. So cannas actually look really nice. And it's nice to see this mix all the different colors together. So you know how it is when you're in a foreign country and everything seems magical, but everything is. So look at their chain link fence. It's really beautiful. It's thick. It's probably been here like longer than most things in America. I like it. <laughs> I like it too. We, we all approve. And then this is a view from outside of the Botanic Garden. <laughs> There's basically nothing ugly here. That's sort of the real lesson. That's how South Africa was as well. You couldn't take a bad picture. Uh, Croatia, very similar in that everything is beautiful. So here we've got Cryptomeria. And then we have Japanese maples. They don't look as happy as they could, but they're alive and they look pretty old. They want more chill hours. They do want more chill hours. And not to be weed whacked. It's beautiful, but it has very little chill. Very please, little chill. Please, please show people not to weed whack the bottom of choice trees. <sighs> yeah, that's actually a very good lesson. My God. Don't, and that's why you need to have okay. a mulch ring around it. Or just leave just, the grass. Or leave, let the grass grow tall, but hitting the trunk is very perennials. problematic. Yeah, frankly, just having a bed where other perennials would be growing under it mm -hmm. would be to its advantage. Mm -hmm. So there you go, everybody. Lord <laughs>